and we are live we are live we are live it's friday and it's a surprise live lesson today because normally i'm not here on fridays i've been here on saturdays i've been here on tuesdays now and now here i am and i'm really excited because i have special guests with me i said i was going to be having some special guests on um, my Instagram yesterday, so I would absolutely love to introduce to you two Phrasal Verb Club members. Who wants to do the first introduction? <laughs> okay, I'll do me first, and then we'll talk about it. So if you are just joining me live, and this is the very first time my name is Jennifer Nascimento, and I am the teacher at English Outside the Box and the creator of the Phrasal Verb Conversation Club. So if you are watching live, please say hello in the chat and tell me where you're watching from. I see we have Nasir, we have Sam. So let me know where you're watching from. Um, English Outside the Box, I help students, English learners, reach a higher level um, of English fluency because they, you know, I, I help people speak better English for jobs, for work, for travel, to live more comfortably in English. And that's why I created the Phrasal Verb Conversation Club. So, two of my members are here. Let's see. Who wants to go first? The, the, the first ladies. Oh, <laughs> ladies first. What a gentleman you have. <laughs> so, Myra, hello, welcome. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you. My name is Myra. I'm from Brazil. I'm living in Chicago now. I study law in Brazil, and now I'm doing a paralegal course here. I need English fluency because I need to work here and special with law. I need to, to become fluent in writing, reading, speaking. Then I choose this, this course, phrasal verbs course, because I need to, to learn sometimes I understand the normal verbs, but I don't understand the phrasal verbs because it's difficult. That's the reason I chose this, this course. <laughs> Woohoo! Why are phrasal verbs so difficult, do you think? Because the, the meaning is not the, literally the meaning. Then mm -hmm. it's difficult to learn and to comprehend what why people use this yeah. example, yesterday I was listening uh, your podcast uh-huh you told me something oh, the, on the top of my head but on the top of my head is here but <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's difficult so I know you didn't prepare for this, but do you have a favorite phrasal verb in English? Uh, no, I think um, that one, I don't remember correctly, but the thumb of the rule, the, no, rule of thumb. Ah, uh, the rule of thumb? I, yes, mm -hmm. and the, on the top of my head, I think it's... Are good ones. Yeah, so those are idioms, which are also so similar to phrasal verbs in oh, that... Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay, but native speakers use these all the time. All the time. Um, so, thank you. Who is our other guest in the house? Now the gentleman gets to go. <laughs> well, uh, I'm from Brazil, too. <laughs> And I live in sort of Brazil. The city is uh, Joinville. Joinville. Uh, Joinville, yes. Santa Catarina. I, I think Mara know this. Oh, I know uh, Santa Catarina. Yes. I haven't, ah, yeah? been, I haven't been yet, but I, I'm looking forward 
to going. I really want to go. It's a, it's a beautiful state. Yeah? Oh yeah. Um, um, I I own a business. I, I have a small business with um, twenty employees. Mm -hmm. And I have a um, uh, good family. It's uh, two children. Um, one of them is uh, eight years old, and other it's a uh, nine years old. Uh -huh. It's um, boys or girls? Two boys. Two boys. Two boys. Yes, Salomon and Benjamin. <gasps> Benjamin um, was going to be my son's name. Oh yeah. I um Benjamin was my second choice. Second choice, yeah. Yeah. It's a good It's a good and name. And what else? Yeah. Where else? Um oh, I, I, you, you ask me uh, some questions and about the practice in English, it's a challenge where I, I, can I speak these or no? Yeah. Or some questions, other questions that you have. Yeah. So I would just love to know. So we're we're here talking today, and we're sharing fluency tips. So how to speak English fluently. Obviously, I'm an English teacher, and I give tips all of the time. I create videos to help people with fluency. I write blog lessons to help people with fluency. And as an English teacher, and a language learner, I do know how to effectively speak and learn and practice a language, but you two are perfect examples of people learning English and practicing English and trying to be fluent in English. So I wanted to invite you on to talk about your favorite fluency tips. Me? Uh, well, I, I, I I have a listening uh, English in, in my car all the time when I driving. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a good for me. Um, yeah, when I arrive in my job, usually I I, I check my mail that they receive a, a newsletter about English. Yeah, newsletter about English. Yeah, with uh, vocabulary, text, and videos, um, many things, and. Um, and in the night, usually I, I, I study English, yeah, listen to TED conference, usually. Oh, yeah, you know those TED are good. Conference? Yeah, TED, TED Talks. Yeah, TED Talks, yeah, TED Talks. And studying study English, it's uh, uh, write down the words and this, yeah, and the phrasal verbs difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. We'll get into that more. You'll definitely be able to share more. But Myra, what about some tips you have <laughs> for fluency? Oh, I I read a lot. Um, I read a lot about law and about the everything because I like. And I listen all the time uh, lectures. I discovered some good uh, law lectures. And always I listen this or podcast is because it's easier when you when i i'm going to walk someplace i put my headphones and i listen podcasts and i try to to speak in english yeah sometimes it's, it's difficult when people speak uh, people speak Portuguese or Spanish is sometimes it's difficult <laughs> in English. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying. So what is the best way that you have found, both of you have found, to speak in English, to practice speaking in English? Because podcasts are great, <laughs> writing down, reading emails, reading newsletters, all of that is fabulous and fantastic. But mm -hmm. every Every student I ever meet has one question. Yes. How I practice? For me, oh, or, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Myra, what'd you say? 
Now, for me, it's very important to speak with the native American speakers. Mm -hmm. Native speakers? Like, native, native, native English speakers. Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because now I know the difference. <laughs> um, and for, um, me, for me, it's very important. Very important. Welcome! Welcome. We have, we have another chart. Dora, hey, Dora, Dora, can you turn down your volume? volume? Okay, sure. Call the volume. Is it call the volume? The volume, yeah. The volume, yeah. We can oh, hear our we can echo. Hear our echo. Uh, you can hear your echo. Wait, should I put on the earphone? You can try to put you on the earphone. You can try to put on the earphone. Turn, but if you turn down, down the volume. volume. Oh, turn down volume. I think it'll be a little better. I think it'll be a little better. Is it okay now? Check one, two. Check one, two. Uh, Hello. Uh, it's okay. We can still hear the echo. We can still hear the echo, but try to and, and turn down the volume. And turn down the volume. Okay, let me see. But welcome. But welcome. Oh, thank you. Finally able to join. I was quite shocked just now. Yes. So, Dora, we are yes. live. So, Dora, yes. we are live. Well, yes. yes. My brother was just, my brother was just us, telling us um, about the importance, about of, the speaking, importance right? of speaking, right? Yeah, yes. yes. Okay. The importance of speaking. So, yeah. Myra? So, Myra? Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and continue. You can go ahead and continue. Oh, for me, oh, for uh, me, when we uh, when we opportunity, opportunity to choose America, America, people is people very is very difficult to speak our English, and, and, and yeah, can't, can't, yeah, can't, can't because, because we can improve it, and improve it, our, our, and our, and our, 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 yes, Myra, yes. can you hear Myra, your, you echo, hear as your well? echo as well? Yes, it's yes. not. Yes, it's yes. yes. Okay, wait, just a little moment. Okay. I am going to, Dora, yeah. I have muted you for right now until you, until you're ready. I have muted you. But <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is the beauty of technology live and connecting around the world because we have here in the States, Brazil, and we have Malaysia here, right? So what a great um, mix, but okay. Let's see. Maybe let's see if Dora's ready. Um, Dora, are you ready? Can you try to unmute yourself? Uh, no. You have to click unmute at the bottom. Okay. Well, as she's trying to figure it out, okay, um, I want to know, in this conversation club, you guys know that I'm going to be connecting you guys, or you have already connected with your conversation partner. So how beneficial is a conversation partner? What do you think is the benefit of having a conversation partner? That's a, that's also an English learner. Anyone? Oh, Salomon, you move first, so you get to go. Do you, uh, what do you think is the benefit? Mm -hmm. um, it's all benefits, huh? <laughs> because you you learn, uh, you listen, you read. Um, Many things, but the, the practically with uh, speak and uh, talking about this uh, English, it's it's very difficult. Then when you have a uh, uh, someone to practice, it's um, I think it's improving on English because the difficulty is singing English. Yeah. yeah. Not 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 translate first after uh, speak. This is a problem, a big problem. Translating for me, for yeah, for me, for example, I think translating is not just a problem for you. Um, Myra, do you have an issue with translating, and what do you do to not translate? Oh, uh, I had in 
at the beginning when I started studying English. Now I think sometimes I try to translate, but in the most part of the time, I'm just talking. But sometimes I talk something wrong, but uh, it doesn't matter for me because I'm learning. And if I, I, I shame on me all the time, it's not good because I can't improve my English. I, I know I, my English is not good. I speak many times I speak wrong, but it's okay. I'm learning and one day I, my English will, will be perfect. <laughs> I think I think that is really great to to say, you know, it's okay to make mistakes, you're learning. But I think what's really important for the three of you and for everyone watching as well is to try to get out of the habit of saying, "Oh god, I'm so sorry for my English" or "Oh, my English is so bad." You know, like apologizing because you guys are speaking and learning another language. Like it's such a amazing thing to be doing. So you should never apologize, but it's, it's weird that we as humans feel like we need to apologize. Right. It's, <laughs> yes. I think it's kind of a natural yeah. thing. Um, but Dora, are you here? Are you back? Yes, I'm back. Woohoo, Dora. Okay. So yes, tell yes. us a little bit quickly about you and your English and your number one tip for English fluency. Um, last time, because in Malaysia, this is one of the required subject in Malaysia. So I started learning English while I was in my primary time, primary school time, and even kindergarten already started. And the time when I get to learn more in English, because uh, in my secondary school actually I went to international school so uh, it's English school so I get to learn more and I learn my speaking from there yeah. so my number one tip was to check the dictionary check out the dictionary yeah. check out the dictionary so for the words that I don't know for words that yeah. you don't know absolutely mm. phrasal verbs phrasal mm. verbs are, it's kind of difficult to look up and find a phrasal verb in the dictionary. I, yeah, I would true. think, right? Yes. What do you guys yes. think is the challenge with that? And how have you been learning phrasal verbs in the past? I don't even know I'm learning the thing. The, the verbs are called phrase, phrasal verbs in the first place. Until I think last year, when I started to have a chance to explore the new English classes and new um, English page in Facebook, then I get to know there's something called phrasal verbs. I think? No. Before that, earlier when I get... Um, no, it was uh, when I get to do a test in English, then I get to know that actually there's something called phrase, phrasal verb, which I never know earlier. Yeah. Yes. And I asked Myra, but I didn't ask Dora or Salomo, do you have a favorite phrasal verb? <laughs> favorite? I asked mm. my husband this because my husband is a non-native English speaker as well. Mm. So English is not his first language. And he told me his recently was like hookup. And then we ended up doing a phrasal verb <laughs> or a phrasal verb Facebook live lesson talking about the word hookup. Um, so do you guys have a favorite phrasal verb? At the moment, is it counted as a phrasal verb or is phrasal verb or is it an idiom or what? Which one? Too sure about it. At the moment. Uh, at the, at the moment, moment is more of a, a prepositional phrase with a prepositional okay. phrase with at but yeah okay so what about you salomo for me no now i i i was studying uh, put up with the phrasal verb is that to put up with and what does put up with mean um in english <laughs> 
Pressure. <laughs> Just kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, with an uh, example, can be. Yeah, that's even better For to example, help everybody. It's a uh, maybe no no one pull pull with more frustrations. Put up with. Put up with. Put up with more frustration. And so, from context, how. Or from context, I'll ask everybody else watching live and in this call, what does that mean now if you had to say what that meant? Because I'm, if I say the meaning, obviously I'm cheating because I know what the meaning is. <laughs> but my... Well, the, the context is um, um, people uh, talking about something or... Uh, didn't get in something and the people um, didn't uh, put in with uh, the situation uh, stay stay uh, frustration with uh, don't get in something huh? it's difficult <laughs> uh-huh and i think i mean it's always difficult and this is one of the other activities and exercises that you all are going to do in the phrasal verb club which is practice your ability to explain and utilize phrasal verbs in different contexts so a lot of times with definitions over my years of teaching my students have said oh put up with yeah I know that phrasal verb I know the meaning and I'm like oh great so what is it yeah and it's like crickets and so it's the the ability of explaining what something means and then using it is so much more difficult than people imagine and so one of the exercises that you guys are going to do in the phrasal verb club is Practice your ability to not only use these phrasal verbs, but explain them a little better, a little easier. A little easier. Mm -hmm. So some of you have already connected with your conversation partner, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> How? Tell me about the experience with your conversation partner. Anyone? Okay, first time. And uh, just getting to know one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's just getting to know one another, I think, right? Getting uh, to know one another <laughs> and practicing, yeah. Yeah. Practicing. So Myra, how was your experience with your conversation partner? Oh, it was very good. It's Dora, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my partner um, has a good English. <laughs> I did learn a lot with her, and it was very interesting. I like it. We we introduce ourselves to each other. But, uh, we talk about the country, about the life. Life was very interesting. Yeah, so it's a good, these introductions, and when you first meet your conversation partner, practicing the ability to introduce yourself, talk about your job, your everyday routines, those things are really important mm -hmm. for um, your English. And then, Salomo, you had met your partner already, right? Yeah, I, I told her, uh, Paulini, uh -huh. she's uh, French. French? French. Hi, Paulini, if French. you're watching. Sorry, you had technical issues today. Yeah. She was supposed to join us today. <laughs> um, I, told, I told her yesterday and today too, um, before this, this, this hangout, I, I told him to. It's, uh, I introduced me for her and, and it's, a, it's a good about the job, a routines, phrase of who use uh, routines. Um, I think it's uh, some about the uh, country, Brazil and France. It's a good. Yes. Good. So 
as you can see, every person in the phrasal verb club has connected with somebody who speaks a different language. So nobody in the club has connected with somebody who speaks their same language because even though I know all of you are 100% dedicated to learning English, sometimes it's a little easy to go back and use your native language if you don't understand something, right? Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Shana. The tempting, right? Temptation, tempting. yes. Temptation. So I am going to eliminate all temptation <laughs> to use your language because that's the goal trying to communicate 100% of the time in English. So, um, and so I love some people in the live chat are giving some examples of phrasal verbs like hang on, to go off, and things like that. So that's really great. So our first group conversation call is tomorrow. 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 So, 7 a.m. Tomorrow. PST, yes. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow is our first group conversation call. We're not going to be live, obviously. And we're going to be reviewing a lot of the material that we have, that you have already had in the classroom, in the lesson. So can you guys quickly teach one of the phrasal verbs that you learned this month? Is that too is that too much pressure? Is that scary on on a live no. broadcast? No, I can do. <laughs> Woo okay. <laughs> For example, look up. Mm -hmm. If you say look up, um, you the meaning could be uh, look up or <laughs> look up <laughs> at the book. Mm -hmm. uh, the meaning is oh, let's go to see this in this book. I don't know how to explain very well. <laughs> so, no, no, no. So, finding information. Yes. Like in a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, look up was something we talked about in the club. What else have we talked about this month? Dora or Samo? I, 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 I watched uh, your, your video in the Facebook with uh, your uh, husband. My husband? About the uh, hookup. 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 Hook hook uh, I don't know. It's very interesting. Hookup. The, the, this, this means, huh? Because it yes. means it's a uh, um, help something, yeah? Yeah. Help, help someone. Right with, now. With needs. Right now, we are hooking up all of the people watching with some <laughs> phrasal verbs. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It's good. Um, and then Dora, what about something from inside the course? Something on the inside. Sleep in. Sleep in. Sleep in. Okay. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, this is what, uh, to sleep a little longer, to get up a little bit later than usual. So this is what I've learned. And actually I have made uh, in an Instagram uh, post for that. I am not sure whether you saw it or not. I hashtag you earlier because I saw Today? your IG story. I see it. Um, actually, I did make a post on Instagram uh -huh. uh, using this word sleep in because uh, a few days ago, I remember you tell us to, you gave, you gave us a challenge yeah. to post it. I'm not sure whether you saw it or not. I don't think I saw it. So we'll oh, check after this. Me. After this, we'll talk and we'll check it. <laughs> okay, sure, sure, sure. After this, we'll check. Yeah. So we are going to wrap up this live lesson a little bit. Um, we do have one question in the chat that I'm going to ask to see if any of you want to explain it. Dora, Myra, or Salmo. You don't need to. It's a, we talked about it actually on Tuesday's live lesson on YouTube. So if you watched that lesson, but Sam Joni asked, how do you differentiate a preposition? So a verb and a preposition from a phrasal verb. So Myra, you had used the example of look up. 
look up, preposition, mm -hmm. or look up, phrasal verb, finding information. So do either of, or any of you three have any tips for how do you know if it's a preposition or a phrasal verb? I think it's the meaning. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the mean, when you understand the meaning, you can you can understand what if is preposition and verb or if it's phrase or verb. Mm -hmm. Context too. Context. So what is con what is context? I've been talking about context a lot. What is context? What does that word mean? If you the, had to explain that to somebody who was this, this situation is 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 um, in the moment in the when you have a um, situation, you 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 can use look up, for example, eh? look up to look up or look up and define something. Mm -hmm. So if I said, oh, I looked up and saw a bird. Is that a preposition or a phrasal verb? I looked up and saw a bird. Is that a preposition? Preposition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because it's like I looked up and saw a bird. We know a bird is in the sky. So for me to see a bird, I have to look up in the position. So context, as someone said, is that is that definition. So just to reiterate, just to say it again to make sure, the main difference, how you know if it's a preposition or a phrasal verb is from the meaning. Look up, using that as an example. We know what the meaning of look is. When we add up, does it change the meaning of look or does it give it extra detail? If it's giving it extra detail, like look up, look up, it's giving me detail where to look, right? So look up. However, if we say, I need to look this up in a book, it's changing the meaning of look because now it's searching for information in a book. So Sam, Joni, I hope that made sense to you. Like I said, we're gonna wrap up this live lesson. Um, if there was one more tip that you wanted to share that was part of your English success, because a couple of people in the chat was like, you know, Adriana B says, like, I look up to you three for accepting to speak live, right? It's, <laughs> it's scary, you know, you're, it's nerve wracking. It's very nerve wracking to speak live in this language you're trying to learn if you're uncomfortable. Um, and so a lot of people were, you know, very proud of you guys for coming on live. <laughs> but if you wanted to share one more tip, how did you get to the level you are to accept speaking live in English on YouTube? Do one not tip. Be fear. Do huh? not be fear to speak. Do not be afraid. Must be courageous enough to speak. Then you will improve. Nice. So be courageous. Don't be afraid. Yes. Any other tips, Myra or Samo? It's like you're you're parting wisdom with the world. <laughs> yeah. Talk in English. Always you have the opportunity talk in English and as Dora said don't be afraid you will make a mistake but you are trying <laughs> yeah and lucky last but not least Samo any final words of wisdom <laughs> No, no, it's uh, the same. It's uh, I'm afraid. It's uh, the problem. I scare. So good. <laughs> so then, of course, as I mentioned in the beginning of this le in this live video broadcast, was Dora, Myra, and Salmo are some of the members of the Phrasal Verb Conversation Club, which officially kicks off. Phrasal verb today. kicks off mm -hmm. technically today because this is our first live live call together with some mm -hmm. of the people, but it actually officially kicks off this weekend. Tomorrow we're having our first bonus calls, 
If you sign up for the Phrasal Verb Conversation Club today, you are going to get access to April's bonus materials. So a video, definitions of some words, a phrasal verb challenge, and you can connect with your conversation partner. Then if you join today, you can be a part of our first group call tomorrow. So tomorrow we're meeting with all of the members to practice what we've been learning and to practice speaking. So you all are going to be able to come with your questions. Ooh, someone has a, a loud motorbike outside. You're going to be able to come with your questions. We're going to practice speaking and we're going to utilize everything that we learned. And you guys can sign up. I'm going to be putting the link for everybody to sign up in the comments of this live lesson. It's going to be in the description below this video. And you are definitely going to, you know, be able to sign up and start using your English. Um, any other final words you guys want to say to invite other clubbers to come inside? No pressure. Thank you for the club. <laughs> Sorry, say it again, Myra. Mm -hmm. Come to the club because Jennifer is a good teacher. You Woo! Yeah. <laughs> and I promise nobody has been paid to yeah. say that nobody is a sponsor <laughs> or paid advertiser here. Good. All right. Anything else? Anyone else want to say anything? It's kind of hard. Here's another expression on the spot. It's hard to think and to speak of something on the spot, right right away, right? But thank you guys yes, so speaking. much. Samo, Dora, and Myra, thank you for being brave. Thank you for being courageous. And thanks for joining me today live to tell everybody watching your top tips for fluency, talking a little bit about the Phrasal Verb Club and just sharing a little bit about you and your experience. And then thank everybody else. Thank you for watching live. Thank you for learning with me. And remember, if you want to connect with me, Salmo, Myra, Dora, and people from France and Turkey and Spain, um, who else do we have? South Korea, then you can come in and join the Phrasal Verb Club. We want to have you. <laughs> Happy studying. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you.